Tonight, a new eye opened on the universe. It didn't just take a pretty picture, it pressed record on the largest time lapse of the sky ever attempted. A survey so wide and so fast that it can watch the cosmos change night after night. This is the first light from the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, and it marks the moment our sky becomes a live feed. You might be thinking, we already have Webb, we already have Hubble, why do we need another telescope? Because Rubin does a different job. Webb and Hubble zoom in, Rubin zooms out. It captures enormous swaths of the sky at once, then returns to them again and again. It doesn't hunt a single masterpiece, it builds a living movie. Supernovae, near-Earth asteroids, tidal disruptions, kilonovae, comet outbursts, and events we haven't even named yet. Space telescopes get the details. Rubin catches the moment. The first official images arrived recently during commissioning. Final tests complete soon, then the decade-long survey begins. From that point on, the sky is no longer a static dome. It is a pulse, an alert stream, a story that updates while you sleep. Welcome to Quantum Leap. If you want clear, no-hype space docs, hit subscribe. Rubin sits high in Chile's Atacama Desert, where the air is thin, dry, and dark. The observatory is built around the Simonai Survey Telescope, a fast three-mirror system that feeds a sharp, wide field. At its focus lives the LSST camera, a car-sized instrument with 3.2 billion pixels. One exposure covers about 10 square degrees of sky. Think of more than 40 full moons captured in a single frame. When the survey is running, the observatory will pour tens of terabytes of data down a dedicated fiber line every clear night. It is industrial astronomy, not a snapshot. Space telescopes avoid the atmosphere and dive deep, but they can't scan huge areas quickly. Rubin trades some zoom for speed and coverage. It will map the half of the sky visible from Chile, return to those fields every few nights, and repeat that drumbeat for a decade. Stack those revisits, and you get a time domain atlas, a searchable movie of change. That movie does something new, it lets us catch cosmic fireworks as they ignite. It lets us track asteroids before they get close. It lets us measure how dark matter sculpts galaxies through the subtle sheer of weak lensing. It lets us chart the Milky Way's halo with variable stars, R. R. Lyrie, whose rhythms become distance markers. It also creates a public treasure, billions of objects and trillions of measurements available for anyone with the curiosity to look. This is not about finding the single greatest frame, it's about discovering patterns across time. Before the official start, the first tests already showed what the system can do. Early images revealed dense star fields, sprawling nebulae, and a sea of distant galaxies. They also highlighted a strength you can feel at a glance, context. Instead of a tight crop, you get the object and its neighborhood, gas, dust, clusters, and the faint scaffolding between them. A debut mosaic targeted the Southern Virgo Cluster, the closest large galaxy cluster to us. Across a field the size of many city skylines placed side by side, spirals wind like whirlpools, ellipticals glow like lanterns in fog, and faint tidal streams stretch between galaxies like pulled sugar. It's structure on structure, and that single mosaic is only a hint of what the survey will collect. Another field swept across the Lagoon Nebula with the Trifid and the open cluster M21 in the same frame. Because Rubin can switch filters quickly and stack exposures over time, faint and cold structures rise out of the background. You see how bright nurseries live inside their larger clouds, how clusters gather, and how dust lanes bend the light. It feels less like a postcard and more like a neighborhood map. Even in warm-up, the system started doing science. In a short testing window, the pipeline flagged new asteroids and standard candle variables. None of the near-Earth finds were dangerous. All of them tightened our map of what shares our orbit with the Sun. That is the rhythm Rubin will keep. See, flag, follow, learn, night after night. Think in two mindsets, the deep zoom mindset and the wide context mindset. With a deep zoom, you study the heart of the lagoon and see jets and shock fronts in exquisite detail. With a wide context, you see the lagoon in its environment, side by side with the Trifid and M21. 
with dusty filaments and background galaxies. You see relationships, you also see change, because the same field will be photographed again a few nights later and again after that. If anything shifts, brightens, fades, moves or explodes, the pipeline notices. That is how you catch the unplanned. If this is your kind of science, tap like so YouTube shows you the next Rubin alert. Context also saves you from fooling yourself. A bright spot in isolation might look bizarre. In context, it becomes a knot in a larger flow. With Rubin, context is not a luxury, it is the method. Three ideas give Rubin its edge, and they work together like gears. A fast corrected optical train feeds a wide flat field with minimal distortion. The car-sized camera holds hundreds of sensors behind large, fused silica lenses. A robotic system moves filters in and out so the observatory can switch bands without wasting time. And the data pipeline does more than store pictures. It publishes alerts on changes in near real time. That alert stream is the secret source. It lets smaller telescopes pivot. It gives big telescopes targets. It invites the entire community to join the hunt. When you combine sharp wide field optics, a monster detector, and a live alert stream, the night sky stops being a gallery and becomes an event feed. Rubin's Decade speaks to four grand themes that overlap and reinforce one another. The growth of structure traces the fingerprints of dark matter and the push of dark energy. The solar system inventory expands with new asteroids and comets, and the risk picture sharpens long before close passes. The transient sky becomes readable, Supernovae, novae, tidal disruptions, kilonovae and fast blue flashes leave light curves across colors that tell you what exploded and why. The Milky Way's outer halo reveals itself through variable stars that act like mileposts, sketching the streams of long-lost dwarf galaxies. None of this relies on a single glorious frame. All of it relies on repetition. Do it once and you have a photo. Do it for years and you have a story. 3.2 billion pixels sounds abstract, so lean in. A single Rubin exposure covers a patch of sky wider than your outstretched hand at arm's length. Night after night, the observatory will stack exposures, refine positions, and polish light curves. The data rate is relentless, and that is a feature. It means you are seeing the universe update in something close to real time. The survey will fuel bold claims. Some will be right, some will not. Here's how to keep your sea legs without turning this into a list. Repetition matters. When the same behavior shows up across many nights and many fields, confidence rises. If a bright point lives inside a busy region, dust, lensing, or a short starburst might be at work. The way light rises and fades is a fingerprint of the physics that made it. On this channel, we will chase the evidence, not the echo. The plan is simple. See the alert, read the curve, check the neighborhood, then bring you the story once the pieces lock. The Virgo canvas teaches scale. You feel the crowding. You feel gravity at work. Interactions stretch stars into thin bridges. Mergers build bigger cities of light. Everything you know about structure formation is right there not as a diagram, but as a snapshot of a living process. The Lagoon Triffid frame teaches context. Close-ups are beautiful and necessary, but they are pages. Rubin shows the chapter those pages belong to. Gas feeds stars. Stars carve gas. Clusters gather. Dust hides. Infrared light reveals what the eye misses. The early asteroid hall teaches tempo. If test nights can find that much, the running survey will flood the catalog. Orbits get tighter, risks drop, surprises shrink. That kind of confidence isn't dramatic, but it is the kind of progress that makes spaceflight safer and planning smarter. The variable stars teach reach. R, R, Lyrie become stepping stones into the outer halo. With enough of them, the edge of the Milky Way stops being a guess. It becomes a map with scars, streams, and memory. All of this before the official green light. 
no instrument wins alone. Rubin finds the action and sets the tempo. Space telescopes and the giant ground-based observatories dive into the details. Smaller scopes fill the gaps and keep eyes on targets when the big mirrors are busy. It's an orchestra. Rubin is the conductor's beat. Everything else falls into time with it. We know what we're hunting. We also know we don't know everything. Past surveys uncovered oddballs that nobody predicted. Ultra-luminous supernovae, fast radio bursts, strange lensing events, interstellar visitors that cut through the solar system without warning. A wider, faster survey increases the odds of brand new categories. The outliers are where breakthroughs hide. Expect rare alignments that turn nature into a magnifying glass. Expect citizen science projects to bloom because this dataset is too rich for any single team. Expect a few wrong turns because that is how the map improves. You come here for clarity, not hype. So here's the approach. Each big Rubin moment opens with a clear result, answers the natural doubt, and explains why it matters now. We'll keep one idea per beat so your brain can breathe. We'll start wide for context and zoom only when the detail changes the meaning. We'll let the data speak, and we'll show you how the conclusion was reached. When a call is uncertain, we'll say so. When a claim dies under better evidence, we'll say that too. The goal is simple, make you feel the thrill without losing the truth. Stand in front of the Virgo mosaic with your eyes. Don't worry about the numbers. Let your gaze wander. This is a city of galaxies under soft weather. Spiral arms curl like waves. Ellipticals shine like warm coal. Between them, hair-thin streams arc and fade. Those threads are history. They are the marks of old crashes and close passes written in starlight. You are looking at gravity's handwriting. Now move to the lagoon and the trifid. You can almost hear the gas. The lagoon looks like a storm with young stars chewing cavities into the cloud. The trifid splits itself with lanes of dust, as if someone drew three strokes across a bright canvas. Off to the side, M21 sparkles like a handful of ice. The beauty is obvious. The meaning is the rhythm. This same field returns a few nights later. If a newborn star brightens, we see it. If a knot of dust shifts, we see it. If a background galaxy flashes because a star around it dies, we see it. That is the promise. The sky will not hold still. When survey mode begins, every clear night produces a river of alerts, small packets that point to change. Most will be routine, many will be junk. A precious few will be gold. The trick is triage. Does a light curve match the pattern of a standard candle? Does an object's path hint at a near-Earth pass months from now? Does a faint shear in the background suggest a dark matter filament we hadn't mapped? Does something brighten too fast or too blue to fit any box we know? The answers do not ride in a single frame. They live in cadence, in color, and in context. That is Rubin's wheelhouse. A camera this large, a data line this fast, an archive this huge. It is easy to lose the thread and think only in big numbers, but everything about this project is human. Engineers polished mirrors by nanometers. Coders built pipelines that do not choke when terabytes arrive at speed. Operators keep a mountain alive in thin air. Astronomers stare at a tiny dip in a light curve at 3 in the morning because it might be new. The first images are a postcard from that world. Wish you were here, now you are. Rubin does not replace Webb or Hubble, it feeds them. Rubin is not about a single frame, it is about time. The first images already show scale, context and speed and they hint at a coming decade of surprise. The sky is live now. If you want to understand what that means without the noise, you're in the right place. In the next chapter, we will follow a single alert from raw exposure to discovery. We will see how a tiny change becomes a candidate, how a candidate becomes a target, and how a target becomes a result the community can trust. Next up, we follow one Rubin alert from raw exposure to discovery. Turn on notifications so you catch it the moment it drops.